morning, everybody. We have a quorum present, the June 15, 2016 sc School uh, Board for Lease of Texas Parks and Wildlife meeting will come to order. First item on the agenda is number one, which is uh, approval of the minutes from our last meeting, November 17, 2015. Um, we have copies furnished to all of our board members in attendance uh, after you all have had a chance to review. Uh, and assuming no questions, comments, I could entertain a motion in, in a second to approve those minutes. <coughs> so moved. Corky's not here, so that's probably you to second. I'll, I'll go ahead and second. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess there's only two of us that can vote on that. Good point. Thank you for that. Uh, motion is made, seconded, and carried unanimously um, with the two present here to approve the minutes that were in attendance in the last meeting. Um, next item on the agenda is number two, <coughs> which is consideration and action on, on the tracks, terms, and conditions for the July 19, 2016 oil and gas and other mineral lease sale. Good morning. Uh, Robert Hatter with Energy Resources Department. Uh, staff has received two nominations for Texas Parks and Wildlife Minerals. Um, the first one uh, for the July 19th, uh, July 19th, 2016 oil and gas lease sale. First one uh, I'd like to present uh, is on the screen. That is Chaparral Wildlife Management Area. It's about 15,000 total acres. Um, we leased it back in 2010 in its entirety, uh, but uh, quite a bit of that acreage has been uh, been released uh, by Anadarko, who had the acreage on the west and then Stato across from that acreage on the east side. Um, what's been nominated is just that area shown in red, uh, the remainder of the park with the exception of what you see slash lines on not been nominated. Staff put, uh, staff recommended and the board put up this same acreage uh, in August of 2015 at $1,000 an acre. Uh, there were no bids received at that time. Um, I've talked with operators in the area to try to find out what the comparables are. There's not a lot of state land in this area, so we don't have a lot of nearby comparables. Um, I'm told that the uh, going rate for unleased acreage in that area is $500 per acre. Uh, therefore, and let you know that the Parks and Wildlife Department owns one sixth of the minerals, not the entirety of the minerals. The other five six are owned by the Light family in San Antonio, Texas. Um, so, therefore, staff's recommending that the board place that portion in red of Chaparral Wildlife Management Area, which is about uh, 273 net mineral acres of ownership by Parks and Wildlife at a fixed quarter royalty, a three year <coughs> primary term, a $500 per acre minimum bid, and a $10 rental. year. The second tract is Lockhart State Recreational Area. It's in Caldwell County near the town of Lockhart. Uh, you can see the Lockhart Airport's there next door. We leased this tract uh, back in September of 2012 for $104 per acre. Uh, that lease has run its term and since expired uh, with no activity. It's been renominated. As you can see, the it appears to be a channel sand that runs through it. You can see that kind of long <coughs> string of oil and gas wells. Those wells were drilled to what's known as the Fentress Formation, which is <coughs> between 1,500 and 1,600 feet, so it's very, fairly shallow in the channel sand. Um, I don't really have any reason to change the, since we got $104 per acre uh, back in uh, September of 2012, staff's just recommending a $100 per acre uh, minimum bid that would generate about $26,000 if it's leased at the minimum. Uh, also, again, fixed quarter royalty three-year primary term and a ten dollar per acre rental also on both tracks both Lockhart State Park and Chaparral Wildlife Management Area we're recommending the board allow no surface use um, and so any development would be need to be done by uh, directional or horizontal wells um, I know on the Chaparral Wildlife Management Area uh, in talking with the nominator they're comfortable with that so there should not be an issue um, also in the Chaparral Wildlife Management Area, <coughs> the underlying lease to the lights, the five, six mineral owners, has a five well a year uh, drilling program. They, it's a continuous development uh, clause that, that requires them to drill, drill five wells per year uh, or the acreage will expire if not held by production. So in order to synchronize the Chaparral Wildlife Management Area lease with um, the underlying five, six mineral interest owner, staff's recommending that at the end of the primary term, we require the same thing. For the expiration primary term, they have to drill five wells per year 
before the lease will expire as to any acres not within a proration unit held by the wells that are drilled. There's currently, I think, 15 wells. Uh, well, there's another five that have been drilled. So there's currently 20, 15 producing, and either 19 or 20 out there. It's all in the Eagleford, so it's all Eagleford production. Is that the, uh, which part of the window is it uh, more oily? That's gas here. They're not gas. great wells. You can see, you see a lot of activity. Do we have to uh, sign that an agreement with the uh, the family that owns five six of the minerals, or how does that how does that? Uh, They're currently leased to, to Anadarko, um, and so they that lease is still ongoing. So, but they still have to they still have to continue to drill five wells a year, or the lease with the Light family will expire as to any acres not held in a proration unit by a well. So there's no we've had communication with the Light family. Um, Is this the acreage that was released by Anadarko? Yes. And all I know for a while we talked to them about there were some force majeure claims and all this. Has all that been cleared up on this acreage? I, mean I believe they're no still in litigation with Mr. Light. With uh, the Lights, okay. With in particular with Scotty Light. There's two sides of the Light family. Yeah. There's the George Light side and the Scotty Light side. Scotty has the minerals to the north. The, the ranch to the north is a, a Briscoe, Chip Briscoe ranch. Um, and Scotty has the lease on that. Anadarko wanted to set up and drill outside of the wildlife management area from Mr. Briscoe's property and drill underneath. Yeah. And so uh, Mr. Light, who owns five six of mineral, or actually he owns five twelfths of mineral, his brother owns five twelfths, um, has filed a lawsuit to stop them from drilling up there. Okay. I'm not sure the current status and the state of communication. Yeah, the, of course, they, they, uh, the Light family lost, or Scotty Light side lost in court uh, and appealed and lost again and has appealed again um, and that and uh, the resolution of that case is, is still pending. There's not a resolution yet. Are we not a necessary party to that lawsuit? I mean, if the, 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 the intent of the lawsuit is to prevent drilling of... Well, the, the, uh, the argument in the lawsuit, uh, the Light, Scotty Light's argument is that the uh, borehole penetrates minerals that have not been leased to Anadarko and, and represents a uh, subsurface trespass. Yeah. So far, so far <coughs> the court has not, has not sided with that, with that argument. Yeah, when we had discussed I it earlier, it was, it was primarily about the location off-site to the north, and he feels like he's being damaged there. But I think that the underlying minerals in our tracks, I think is, that's why I just wanted to make sure we were squared away on that. I portion. thought that case was resolved, though the Supreme Court mm -hmm. Left it as is. The San Antonio courts. Uh, you're talking about the Lightning versus Anadarko case, where they drilled from from one track yes. beneath another, through another, got a got a surface lease, surface agreement from that owner, and into the park. And we filed amicus brief in that case. Right. Um, and I think it's over. Yeah. I thought it was that the Supreme Court had resolved. My counsel tells me that it's that it's. Appealed now. I don't know if they're asking for <coughs> for a revisitation of the Supreme Court, but that it's appealed, and as far as our council is concerned, it's not it's not ultimately resolved. Okay. I'm, I'm, can't remember. Okay. Uh, yeah, you answered. I had Robert. I had three questions when you went over it the first time, and then you came back, you circled back, and you answered all three of them. So I don't want to seem disinterested, but you've answered all my questions. So I've, I feel like I'm supposed to ask some just to to do our job. But but good work. Um, Staff recommends uh, approval of staff recommendation. Um, this is the same surface uh, prohibition that they signed on, that Anadarko signed on to last time, correct? Well, it, this is more of a strict prohibition against any entry into the property. The last time it was put up, which we didn't receive bids on it the last time, it had a rather extensive surface use agreement on it. Uh -huh. Yes, originally this would have been, back when it was originally leased, yes, this was the prohibition that was on there. So they would have to go in and get Parks and Wildlife's approval to enter onto the property. But with the current technology, you know, they can drill 7,500, <coughs> 10,000 foot lateral, 
And so they can easily set up off-lease and develop property mm -hmm. from adjacent private mem uh, landowners once they get sued. Is, is that a yearly staff recommendation not to, or to allow for development not on surface? Um, Parks and wildlife, yes. Okay. I, I was just curious. I didn't know if we had any. <coughs> in most, in most uh, cases, like Lockhart State Park, I mean, they're, they're small enough where you can develop off. And it, it doesn't mean that they can't do it. They just have to go to Parks and Wildlife and, and make a deal with them because, because of the uses of these services for wildlife management or for a state park. We want to be sure that they go through Parks and Wildlife to, to meet their guidelines for surface use if they need to. And Chaparral, there's, there's a lot of history there. The Chaparral is a little bit different situation because the state only owns one-sixth. And a five-sixth may or may not have that surface uh, concern always. So In previous nominations, we did have provisions for surface occupancy via a surface use agreement and had, quite frankly, negotiated a surface use agreement with Anadarko. Um, just about the time, they kind of lost interest uh, because of the, the, uh, the lack of production and the, and the dropping prices. Mm -hmm. so, so there are provisions uh, in some cases for operating from our surfaces. And Robert, you, uh, when you reached out to other operators, you didn't you didn't sense that the <coughs> terms of the surface the, the the surface terms the surface protection terms were too onerous. That wasn't cited as a reason that, that we didn't get any bids last time. It was the thousand dollar. Thousand dollar. Okay. So now we're going to a straight. Yeah, I've talked uh, to interested parties. Well, and interested <coughs> parties. I, I can't say the name off the top of my head, but um, and they they're willing to, to buy a lease on it. think Parks and Wildlife gets to enjoy use of that money if they do that. Well, it goes into unappropriated, unappropriated fund nine for wildlife division. And at this point, it's been quite a while since those funds were appropriated back to us, but it, it's there on paper. Okay. Uh, I'm comfortable with it. I'm, I move we approve. Uh, well, I'm talking about Chaparral. Uh, is there anything else we need to talk about on Lockhart? Chaparral and Lockhart State Park. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, I make a motion we approve staff, re staff recommendation on both Chaparral and Lockhart um, and put them up for sale at the, at the July 19th lease sale. And I'll second that nomination, that, that uh, motion. Motion is made, seconded, and carried unanimously to approve item number two. Uh, there being no further business before the meeting, the meeting is hereby adjourned.